Bevy 0.6 is finally here. This release contains 623 pull requests from 170 contributors, so there's a lot to cover. Bevy is an open source, data-driven game engine written in Rust. It focuses on speed and simplicity, and it uses an ECS architecture, which allows you to write code that runs in parallel. In traditional game engines, multi-threading is very hard to achieve. But since Bevy makes it easy to separate your data and your logic, it knows exactly which data can be read and written to at any time. This enables Bevy to run as much of your game logic in parallel as it can, making the most of your CPU cores and achieving much better performance in your games. And with the recently released 0.6, Bevy is now moving to pipelined rendering, which allows you to also run your rendering in parallel with your game logic. It's inspired by Bungie's multi-threaded rendering architecture, which they used in Destiny. In a standard rendering architecture, you would wait for the rendering to complete before moving on to update logic for the next frame. In pipeline rendering, you're able to run the update logic for the next frame while still rendering the previous frame. This can be a huge gain in performance because your renderer is no longer bottlenecking the update logic. When you combine this parallel rendering with your already parallel update logic, you'll be able to have an extremely efficient game without all the complexity that would normally require. Plus, it's written in Rust, one of the most loved programming languages and my personal favorite. This channel is all about game development using Rust and the Bevy game engine. If that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and come join our Discord. Now for 0.6, the release notes are pretty long. Going forward, new versions of Bevy will be released every three months to keep them more focused and small. 0.6 brings lots of lighting improvement. For one, you can now cast shadows from directional lights and point lights just by adding shadows enabled to the component. This will either give you a sun cast effect from a directional light or an omnidirectional shadow from a point light. Rendering lights is pretty expensive, so 0.6 also adds clustered forward rendering. This organizes the screen into chunks so that the renderer can figure out where the lighting actually needs to go. And it enables you to have more lights in your scene with less performance overhead. We also now have frustum culling, which means that objects outside of the camera's view are culled and they won't be drawn. Only objects that are visible are going to be drawn by the GPU. The render graph is extremely powerful and you can do a lot with it. But 0.6 adds a simpler interface called the material trait. This enables you to add your own shaders and materials much easier than it would be to add them to the render graph, but you can still drop down when you need to. For 2D sprites, they're now rendered in batches, which means that the GPU can draw them with much less draw calls. From 0.5 to 0.6, CART reported an increase from 8,000 sprites at 60 FPS to 100,000 sprites at 60 FPS. Also, sprites are easier for you to use. You no longer have to create a separate material, now you can just pass the asset directly into the sprite bundle. For shaders, Bevy now uses WGSL. It still supports GLSL, but WGSL is now the officially recommended language. It also comes with a custom shader preprocessor, so you can use directives like import and if def, which makes your code a lot cleaner when you're writing shaders. Under the hood, Bevy now uses Naga for their shader stack, which means they could remove a bunch of non-Rust dependencies and reduce build dependencies and bugs. Bevy also has built-in support for WebGL and Wasm. All you need to do to deploy your Bevy app to the web is run this one command. If you'd like to test it out, you can check out the Bevy examples which are now on their website. More on shaders, you can now write compute shaders with the new renderer. This can allow you to handle complex repetitive math by using the GPU instead of the CPU. There's a really nice example of Game of Life using compute shaders in Bevy. Moving on to the ECS, we're seeing some pretty big wins in ergonomics. First of all, you no longer have to call the system function when you add a system. All you have to do is pass the function as a parameter and Bevy will figure out the rest. For components, you'll now need to derive the component trait for any structs that you want to add as a component. It's common to accidentally use the wrong struct when you're trying to insert a component. So this ensures that you're only inserting components that are actually meant to be components. It also adds a clear separation between components and bundles, which was a common confusion for new developers. By requiring derive component, components are able to add associated types such as the storage type. This means the Rust compiler can make a lot more optimizations at compile time than it previously would have to do at runtime. Also, it opens the door for future functionality such as event handlers for components. You can also now iterate mutable queries immutably, which makes it easier to avoid conflicts when dealing with complicated queries. If you have direct access to the world, you can now use system state to access system params, and it's cached the same way it would be in a normal system. 
This allows you to reuse the same results efficiently. Use iter combinations to iterate all possible combinations of entities in a query. This is a super powerful tool. For example, you can use it to check collisions of every entity against every other entity. In this example, it's used to calculate gravity in a solar system. This interact bodies system looks at the mass and transform of all combinations of entities to calculate their distance and determine what the acceleration should be. Well, this is a massive change log. I covered my favorite highlights, but if you check out Cart's article, there's lots more small changes that were made to the engine. The contributors that made this possible are awesome. It's a great community. I highly recommend you check out the Bevy Discord. And if you like what we're doing here, come join the Birdhouse Discord. Go to birdhouse.rs or click the link in the description below. Now that 0.6 is out, I'm really looking forward to posting some tutorials on Bevy. We'll be covering all kinds of topics such as the ECS, asset management, physics, networking, the render graph, and lots, lots more. If there's anything you would like to see about Bevy, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to make a video about it. We'll be making not only tutorials, but also full games from start to finish. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.